we're going to do uh, three squares, 1 to 49, 1 to 7, 1, and 0 to 42. Um, the first square will be the, the uh, consist of the numbers from 1 to 7. And what we're going to do is we're just going to arrange them randomly on the first row. So here we go. We're just picking squares to sequentially put the numbers 1 through 7. And uh, then what I do is I take the last two on the first row and make them the first two of the new row and put the remaining five in order across uh, that second row. So one, three, five, two, four, which are the first five numbers become the last five numbers of the second row. I do the exact same thing to every other row based on the row previous to it. And there you go. That is a fully filled out uh, square. It is magic, of course, but it is not done. It is not finished. Uh, we need a second square, and of course we're going to um, do a third one after this. And this is the number 0 to 42 in increments of 7. So 0, 7, 14, 21, and so on, up to uh, 42 are the numbers uh, to be laid out in increments of 7. And... Um, that's 35, and there's 42. And now we take the last three and make them the first three of the next row, and then finish that second row with the first four of the previous row. And we carry on uh, exactly that same way for all the other rows, as we're just going to just speed up this process a little bit for you here. And there you have it. Um, this is another magic square. Uh, of course, both of, the, both of these squares do have magic properties, uh, except that what we're going to do now is we're going to add the first square to the second square and put the results of that addition into a third square. This is exactly like matrix addition. Exactly. And what I'm doing right now is I'm folding up a sheet of paper, um, folding it up just so that I can easily read both uh, magic squares. And as you can see here, I'm adding numbers like the first row, first column of square one to the first row, first col column of square two and placing the result, which is 15 in the first row, first column of the third square. And I keep, I proceed that way for every column. So second row, first column, of square one to the second row first column of square two makes second row first column of square three. Um, if you're familiar with matrix addition, it is exactly, exactly like adding two matrices. And the nice thing that comes out of this is you actually get the numbers from one to 49 in sequence without any repeats. Now on the sixth row sixth column you notice I wrote the number 38 that 38 ought to be a 40 there because I was adding 35 plus 5 and uh, as you can see there a 38 appears twice it, it also appears in the uh, fifth row third column but um, uh, don't worry uh, at the time I was doing this I actually didn't notice the problem so what I did is I went back to the other two squares and just double checked uh, the addition to make sure uh, that um, that that uh, bug was discovered and um, as you can see here everything is adding up to 175 now of course that row is going to be a little troublesome row 6 because of the number 38 it should be 40 and there you go finally it adds up to 175 and um, 175 is the magic number for a seven by seven square whose um, whose uh, numbers consist of the, the numbers one to 49 are uh, non-repeating because it's a seven by seven. There are only 49 squares. So uh, if they are to consist the num of the numbers one to 49, then they can't repeat. And um, as you can see there, there are no repeats in the numbers yet by some uh, random arrangement of these numbers and only certain random arrangements work 
you get the numbers 175 in every row and in every column but you also get it in both diagonals now if you saw my video on 5 by 5 magic squares uh, you also probably discovered that the 5 by 5 magic squares have hyper magic properties and what a hyper magic property is is that uh, many many arrangements uh, which go beyond both diagonals in every row and column adding up to 65 which is the 5 by 5 magic number all have 65 as the magic number but this one is not hyper magic unfortunately it, it's not it doesn't share that same heritage as the 5 by 5 and uh, all uh, all magic squares beyond 7 by 7 uh, are not hyper magic so uh, the algorithm that is used to make this square can be used to create magic squares that are of any odd dimension so um, order order 5 order order 5 order 7 order 9 order 11 order 13 order 15 and so on uh, will produce uh, magic squares um, in exactly the same way and of course the magic number will be different and the magic number obviously goes up um, as uh, as you increase the size of the magic square um, I've tried to write computer programs in which I had say order 21 as the uh, magic number not magic number the order 21 in other words 21 rows and columns and uh, you can get magic numbers in the thousands and even in the hundreds of thousands with sufficiently large magic squares um, I've made them as big as say 50 by 50 uh, I, I no, not 50 by 50 because that's an even number but maybe 51 by 51 um, uh, and or even beyond that even 101 by 101 I, I think that's about as large as in practical terms as I could make it although because I was programming inside a, an Excel spreadsheet I could I could have made them larger than that uh, but I think the point is made uh, if I can make uh, a 101 by 101 magic square I think I could make any size but anyway um, as you can see here I, I also found that if you like you notice how I drew a blue diagonal that doesn't quite go uh, along the main diagonal of the magic square and then cuts through the five on um, column one row seven um, and that adds up to 175 that's that's what I call a wraparound kind of sum but it works if you imagine this square next to itself if you duplicate this square and place another square exactly like it number for number row for row column for column right next to itself you will also get on any diagonal 175 and uh, that's what that blue line shows and uh, but it's not hyper magic meaning that there are not many symmetrical combinations that will add up to 175 unfortunately